Hi everyone, welcome back to The Technical View. This is where we look at the world indices from a classical technical analysis point of view. Um, and we've come up with some really, really cool stuff over the last uh, couple of months, just to start kicking this off again. Um, we'll start with the S&P 500 and we'll also go through the FTSE in Europe. We'll go through the All Ordinaries down under Australia, the Shanghai Composite in China and the BSE 30 in India as well. Let's get started. Now, obviously, you know, the, the thing on everyone's mind is the huge head and shoulders pattern. Uh, typically, as we looked at last week, the target for these things is 100% from the head to the neckline and uh, that on the downside. So we were looking at potentially maybe 1600 on the S&P 500 um, as the target from last week, you know, as a long-term target. Since last week, uh, the market did fall away further to pretty much land right on that neckline and almost close directly on it as well. So the last thing that I want to go into in regards to these patterns and the things that are happening around the world is how do we find a bottom or how do we know when the bottom is, is looking like it's going to be in? A lot of people actually miss it. Uh, a lot of people don't know what to look for. So I'll just show you two things that I personally look for on a really short term basis, like a, a single day, for example, and then on a medium to short term to medium basis on a couple of days is a couple of weeks sort of uh, viewpoint. So let's go back in time and we won't see it right now or currently, but what, what we're looking for is this, these huge capitulation moves. So these huge downward moves, what happens and how do we know when, when those moves are over? One of the best ways to find these bottoms that I have found personally is these single bars. So, you know, it's not, it's not too difficult. They basically start high, they have a really long range down, as in people are just, people just get really freaked out over the course of the day. And then at some point, um, people decide that enough is enough and it's happy days again and it's risk on again and it pushes the price back up to close um, on or near its highs for the day as well. When the market closes above a bar like that, then that would be my personal signal on a really, really short term basis. That one's in December 2014, I believe, or October 2014. Uh, these will happen wherever large capitulation moves happen. So, for example, um, the you know mini bear market in, or the correction, I guess it was ultimately in 2011. That's what we had there. So, started down halfway through the day, went you know had a quite a long range for the day, and then closed back on its highs. And the next day it was able to close above that high as well. And that's what sort of kicked off the next upward move. Now, lastly, uh, let's check out back in 2007, 2008. Uh, during that first down leg in early 2008, um, you can see a couple of these long tail bars. So they'll start halfway or start high and then they'll move right down throughout the day. That, that one is uh, two close ones together. As you can see, it's closed above that previous bar and it's also had a long range itself. Um, then that was really the next point of support for quite some time, probably the next six months. If you're looking at a short to medium term time frame, um, what I look for personally is just a crossing of a trend line and a higher trough and a higher a higher peak and a higher trough. Now, the reason I do that, let's just jump to Australia, the All Ordinaries Australia, uh, the XAO. The reason I do that is recently in December, we had a really, really nice upwards move. And I'll just get rid of this. But, um, you know, it was a nice upward move. It was sort of your Santa Claus rally move. And, you know, people were starting to get a little bit excited. But what we were missing was a higher trough and a higher peak. So, in other words, it didn't go like that, for example. It simply moved straight up and it wasn't able to make a higher trough. And when it did start moving, downwards, it didn't stop. So that's the reason why I look for that shorter to medium term um, confirmation. Now it's the same thing on the All Ordinaries. As you can see, we've got that, that head and shoulders pattern and it's sort of sloping downwards slightly. Uh, the market is currently coming to rest on that, on that neckline as well. We've already looked at the targets for the All Ordinaries, uh, very, very similar to, to the other ones, maybe 4,200 on a longer term basis, you know, if this pattern does play out. And of course, in the meantime, we are looking for those, for those confirmations, those single day and then over a couple of days confirmation of, uh, of a turning point. Let's have a look at the FTSE, uh, really, really similar chart pattern. 
Uh, it's funny how the world markets really look so similar. They are connected in a lot of ways. Uh, now this one has a downward sloping neckline as well. As you can see, there's your head and shoulders pattern. Pretty basic stuff. It's uh, just coming to rest on that pattern there as well. And, you know, really it is, it is falling quite sharply on its way to that neckline. Target we were talking about for the FTSE was uh, potentially the 5,000 level. The 5,000 level is a beautiful big round number as well, quite a psychological number. Um, if it's going to find support, you know, if it actually does fall that far, um, then if it's going to find support anywhere, it definitely will find support at 5,000. Let's look at the BSE 30, and the BSE 30 is in that sort of really large channel move. As we've said, it's just been bouncing around inside that channel for quite some time, and at the lower end of that channel, I'm expecting 24,000. So that's that level, currently uh, about 24,453 or something similar on the BSE 30. Last but not least is the Shanghai Composite, and last week we were talking about the uh, the neckline as the as the level of support for the Shanghai Composite. I just wanted to give you a, a further downside target if you wanted one. Um, what we'd be looking at would be a hundred percent of this previous move here, because if you missed the last couple of weeks that we've been looking at the Shanghai Composite, um, this this sideways move I was looking at as a continuation pattern, like a channel. Um, it's a you know a, a flag, basically call it whatever you like. It's usually just sort of a continuation pattern where it breaks out to the downside, and then typically from a classical technical analysis point of view, it will move 100% of that previous move. So if it does, that would bring us down to around the 2275 on the Shanghai Composite. Um, and on the short term, I'm looking at just that neckline, so at around maybe 2700 on the Shanghai Composite. So there you go, I've given you a few things to look out for and also a few targets just based on that classical technical analysis. I hope it has helped in some small way and I hope you've enjoyed. It's always a good bit of fun and it's another good way to look at the markets. Guys, stop off at the website, it's asxmarketwatch.com. A whole bunch of free stuff there, free courses and free trading systems as well. Have a great week and happy trending until we meet again. Bye for now.